Miss Maria Sade. Uh, most of you know that. And the person, the fifth person, is probably my colleague. And I'm delighted to welcome you to the final lecture of the 2018 Anna Byrne Lex Leadership and Management Student Series. And I mean, I'm delighted to welcome you here. I'm a little bit sad it's the final one for this series because it's been just an amazing series of lectures. So I'd like to start by expressing our gratitude to the Anna Burke Foundation and to trustee and class of 1989 alumnus Helen Deshawn and also Denise Katuna, for the first two students I have met, also named Helen Deshawn, and his wife Jeanette, for providing us this opportunity each year to bring distinguished executives and industry leaders to Claremont to share their valuable knowledge and experiences. I'm thrilled that tonight we are concluding this year's lecture series with Stacy Fell, Vice President of Consumer Venture Investment and External Innovation at Johnson & Johnson Innovation. Stacy earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Sociology from the University of Pennsylvania and received her JD from Vanderbilt Law School. She says she's a recovering lawyer and has been recovering for 17 years. She has nearly in healthcare, life sciences, and computer careers. As a transactional attorney, business development executive, venture investor, and business strategist. At j, &J Innovation, Stacy leads consumer and health technology venture investing and is responsible for all equity investments across the consumer global franchises, as well as enterprise areas that include health and wellness solutions and health technology. Previously, Stacy was a partner at Physic Ventures and led business development groups at Genentech and Third Rate Technologies. And I'll just say, just in case you weren't there at the same time as Robert Jensen, his wife is also a member here. Please join me in welcoming Stacy. Myself, but others, but myself being myself and being a 
small town girl from New Hampshire arriving in Philadelphia with a little soft. Um, she's been having a conversation this evening about failure and how many of us are coming with a, a sort of place of excellence and perfection and so many students and the graduate um, community I got my first C on an exam, <laughs> and um, I nearly was mugged on the street. And so I, I was kind of challenged, but there was, a, there was a fair bit of anxiety. So like a lot of us in the room, my educational and professional path has been um, contoured with many twists and turns. And it's really only been recently, within the last couple of years, um, where I've gained what I think are really powerful insights on the importance of reflecting on the early days, and not just the early days of college, um, but the early childhood days, and, and how those experiences have impacted me as a leader um, and as a person. And so for the next few minutes, um, I want to share with you some insights and highlights of my leadership journey and how my early childhood um, and upbringing has impacted me clearly as who I am and who I want to be as a leader. So my leadership journey really began with three words. My mother uttered to me repeatedly throughout my childhood. And early on, I often asked myself, what could she have possibly meant with such a simple, simple, obvious statement? But it wasn't be a person. It was be a person, like an accent on a person. And my mother urged that who I was and the person that I aspired to be was really reflected in my behavior attitude toward others, in celebrating victories, in warding losses, in making decisions, in building relationships throughout my life. And I've come to appreciate that my brother was inspiring me and challenging me to identify those core values that would define me as an individual, and in the deepest sense, to bring those core values to what ultimately was my, who I was as a person, to every situation and, and circumstance. And so, I want to share a series of reflections and, and try to translate them into how they have embodied who I am as a person and as a leader. Um, the first reflection really relates to a very early leadership model that I was exposed to, and that was during my childhood. Even in rural New Hampshire, I was exposed to a, a profound leadership model, and that was my own parent partnership and parenting style. Um, our home was very much collaborative and a shared sense of, of leadership. Um, my parents were both second-generation New Yorkers who left New York um, after being raised in a rural Jewish household and um, chose to raise their kids in rural New Hampshire. And their model for raising my sister and I were, was all about a shared sense of partnership and teamwork, cooking, cleaning, gardening, parenting. This was all done in a very supportive and collaborative manner. And this early model of leadership um, has influenced me in shaping my own personal and professional relationships, and the importance and emphasize the importance of teamwork and collaboration and shared responsibility. And those are themes that have come 
very much to me today, as we were talking about earlier, quite unique to how her college campus helped define black racism in some ways. And for me, having that influence very early on has been influencing now. Um, fortunately, I'm, I'm blessed to be working with terrific leaders on my team. My colleague John is here. And we're, we're fortunate to have a great team back in San Francisco, where we're based. Um, and I'm fortunate to have a partner who, at home, does all of the cleaning and all of the laundry. So if I'm in our laundry room, she comes in and says, what are you doing? What are you doing in there? No, 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 no. So, so there, that shared sense of, of leadership, I think, is, um, and, and responsibility, I think, has really stuck with me. Um, the second reflection I want to share is about the importance of exploration and experiment system. My parents' path, their own path, and the risks that they took and the sacrifices that they made have reinforced for me the importance of exploration, taking risks, and experimentation. I mentioned that my parents were um, second generation New Yorkers. They lived in the Meat Packing District in New York, which um, now is a very fashionable place in the early 70s, it was not. And they were um, locked at gunpoint in their second story lock up apartment when my mom was six months pregnant with me. And the next weekend, they rented a van and drove to the country and saw the little ranch house on a two lane street and a state road in New Hampshire. And when I think about you know, the, the sacrifices that they made moving away from their family and the courage that that took um, is it's pretty remarkable. Uh, my parents continued to go against the grain and, and pull me out of, of public school when I was in first grade and, and put me in a new Waldorf-based education program for five years. They drove an hour and a half each way um, to prioritize my education and my experience. Um, and when I had turned into the public school system in fifth grade, they felt like they made a horrible mistake because they were told that I probably would have to stay back and you know, I couldn't possibly learn what, what I learned in, what I would have learned in public school. And really everything was, was okay and they, they made the right decision. Um, and you know, one other reflection as, as entrepreneurs, my parents together started business, um, a family business. It was my first job when I was 16. Uh, men, most of the students will not remember this, but uh, they started a small VHS video store in our town that endured for about 15 years until Blockbuster was up the bus, as they did most of the video stores, and then they got disrupted uh, by Netflix. Um, so as I reflect on the, the different circumstances and parts of my childhood, I'm really struck by my own parents' willingness to make changes, to take risks, experiment, and to endure adversity. Um, I'm further struck by the impact that those events have had on, on me and by the immunity that I think we all fight to make change and to the impact that that's had on my own personal um, work ethic Another topic that's come up in the conversation today um, and uh, earlier this evening. Um, the third reflection I want to make is really around a sense of identity that I struggled with early on. Um, growing up as the only Jewish family in uh, my immediate vicinity in New Hampshire, which is a very homogenous rural village, um, was a bit of a struggle as an adolescent. I, I struggled to fit in, and I struggled to find a voice of confidence about my own Jewish identity, and at times I stayed silent about who I was um, as, you know, and my Jewish heritage, and to avoid being singled out or misunderstood, um, or possibly worse. Um, I felt isolated from other Jewish people my age, other Jewish families, 
and the time that I spent with my grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins really instilled in me that there were experiences and people and places um, beyond my museum privilege that I had a calling to and I really longed to see what the outside world was all about and how to connect with other, other views and with my own Jewish identity. It, it took me longer than I expected to really, um, you know, achieve that, uh, that, that connection. Um, you know, it's a process that began when I started as an undergraduate kid where, you know, dated my first Jewish boyfriend and um, ultimately, you know, I think culminated with the birth of my son six years ago and uh, more recently my first visit to Israel. And I think the key is, is my family finds its way through um, how we live and thrive together amongst our community. And, and when I reflect on this journey to a Jewish adulthood, one key insight is really from this experience being able to think and be confident to stand out and be different and encourage others to embrace who they are. And um, I think this really gets to the heart of the heart of, of one of my key messages, which is we are um, who we are fully with every vulnerability and every celebration that we have and every sensitivity. And you know, all of those struggles and experimentations and explorations have really shaped you know, who I am and, and the leader that, that I want to be. Um, so, I, I mentioned that my, my uh, professional journey is, is contoured with, with lots of twists and turns, and discovering and attending some life outside of this small town in, in New Hampshire was really a natural catalyst for my own path and explorations as a young adult, informed by the early leadership models by some of the struggles and sacrifices that my parents made. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a snapshot of, of what that uh, journey looks like um, and, and some of the, the decisions that I've made. So I mentioned that I uh, started out uh, at the University of Pennsylvania. I won't go through all of this criteria. I gave a nice overview of, of my, my uh, professional bio. Um, I, I mentioned that going to the University of Pennsylvania and living in Philadelphia was a pretty significant cultural change um, going into the first city I lived in. Um, I pursued graduate education as a lawyer uh, and focused at law school as a young adult. Um, and I will be taking a question in a second where I went to forever and recovery from that. Uh, just horrific educational failures. And that I came to, and I'm sure some of you have gotten in contact with me as well. Um, I moved to California uh, not for the weather, although it turned out to be a great decision, um, but to work for a Silicon Valley firm working on some legal work in the body, and that's actually how I got into healthcare, um, working with small biotech companies and um, pharmaceutical companies, and really inspired by entrepreneurs wanting to make an impact on healthcare. Um, I transitioned my legal focus uh, to the business development role at Genentech, um, another leading specialty biotech company in, in the Bay Area. And um, those, were, those were twists and turns associated with taking myself outside of the box that I think very specialized education for us in, you know, whether it's law school or engineering or medicine, um, there's, you know, a very intense period of study and um, training. And I know that coming out of law school, I felt like, my gosh, the only thing I can really do is help this out. And, and actually, that was at the time, I was very happy. But the series of those um, twists and turns were about taking some risks and jumping outside of that box and exploring how that analytical framework and way of thinking could actually um, be applied in different ways. Um, short
remarkably in performing another significant transition in my career, I met my partner, Tom, in Stanford at the Lunchroom Event at the Food Center in Los Angeles. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, once again, when we talk about our journey, it's not just the professional journey, but the, the personal journey and, and who we are and the impact that um, people have in our lives and, and, and in our lives. Um, shortly after I met Tom, I left the partner and business development role in the Bay Area to start an investment practice and fund in San Francisco, and I discovered that I really love helping to build entrepreneurial systems and helping to build companies and advise customers. Um, and about three days before I gave birth to my son, who was actually there, um, and I'm still having him, uh, I presented on a research back and health strategy for the investment team, which is sort of building what I was exploring from an investment Again, this iteration of work and, and the personal world. Um, becoming a mother, becoming the chief health officer of a, of a home is uh, something that um, is, <laughs> it's hard to be underestimated to say, but it's a huge thing to do. Um, you know, it's a good uh, whole set of tools and experiences for the work that I do at Johnson & Johnson. their careers, and so shortly after um, having my son Isaiah, about three years ago, um, I joined um, Johnson Johnson, and I continue my focus on science and technology as a solution for consumer health, so this, this space where life science and digital health converge on EDR as, as consumers um, and investing in companies. So each part of this journey um, has been the, the product of thoughtful risk taking and listening and questioning my instincts and managing ambiguity, finding my voice, not being afraid to stand out and do something different, um, owning my pet path and embracing the opportunity to, to be different and to do things differently. And as I embark on new professional endeavors and challenges, I have trust that the capabilities and the experiences that I've had and the judgment to guide my actions for um, success and, as we talked about earlier, hopefully failure, because I can learn through our failures as much as we do with the core of our effort. And I've, I've come to understand um, what some of those core values are who I am as a person. Um, there's, you know, work in the literature that, that talks about these values of um, moral characteristics as, as opposed to performance characteristics. And, and the moral characteristics are really at the core of, of who I think of you know, becoming the person that I am. And the, the ones that really resonate for me are um, empathy, passion, and wholeheartedness. How those have really grounded me when leading or when influencing others to lead. So, in my time at JJ &J over the last 10 years, I've reached reflections and insights and learnings in my own development and improvement, and yet I also return to moments of anxiety and joining a company that's 130,000 strong in our state of Maine. Um, reminds me of when I moved to Philadelphia and was kind of turning over and having to prove myself to a, a new set of stakeholders, uh, being that small fish in a big pond and having to prove um, to myself that I could uh, stand out and find my voice. Uh, so I've, I've had some anxiety along the way. Uh, and, and when I have participated in leadership development programs at JJ. I've, I've thought about this preconceived notion that the purpose of these forums was to be J and J to be sort of 
a, a robot uh, that there was all these ceremonial rite of passage to, you know, adopt the Jane Jane way of thinking. And I can say that it was really refreshing to be so wrong about something. And, and the purpose of these forums was really um, repeatedly emphasize how important it is for authentic leadership. Um, and that's a word that is, you know, thrown around a lot. Um, I think what I'm trying to share is that the authenticity is bringing your full self to something, you know, both the good and the bad, the vulnerable um, aspects and sensitivities, and remaining true to the core set of values that, that really define you, and being open to being vulnerable and bringing the holistic self to everything that you do. So my son, even though he's six, is an enormous, and I realize I'm in kind of a danger zone here, because I, I like to be in Laker territory, but my, my son is an enormous Warriors fan, and he went to his first game and sitting on this chair with this little um, poster, and he was reading it, and he's thinking, what is authentic to me? And the way I described it to him was that you're a fan to a second thing. You're, whether the Warriors win or the Warriors lose, you're with them. And I think that integrated vulnerability and celebratory aspect of authenticity um, is, is what I really tried to, to convey to him. Um, to me, the, uh, the extension of that is back to some of the core values that I around wholeheartedness and wholeness and um, through this quote I read it wholeheartedness there are many tenets of wholeheartedness but at its very core is vulnerability and openness facing uncertainty exposure and emotional risk and knowing that I'm good enough and I think many of you will recognize Brene Brown as a role that this very greatly um, to me really captures you know, what uh, authenticity means, wholeheartedness, and um, some of the core values that, that I've come to recognize in, in myself. Um, I, can, I can trace who I am as a leader and as a mother and as a partner uh, back to the roots of my mother collective of, of me as a person um, and just the way uh, I lead reflection of the leadership models that I've been exposed to, um, and I recognize that I, as I evolve, um, and as I continue to evolve from being as a daughter, to being a sister, to being a partner, to being a friend, to now a mother, I've accumulated rich experiences and insights that have guided me as who I am and how I lead, and, and doing that with authenticity, empathy, and passion. And so part of the discussion that I've had for the last few plus hours has really been sort of a precursor to this dialogue, and, and I hope that you've continued to, to enrich it um, as for the students and your own students, I think, as to where you're sitting. Um, as we continue our journey, as you continue your educational journey and embark upon your professional careers, whether it's higher education or um, a job in industry, make the time to reflect on how you want to lead and, and be curious about what makes you unique as a leader, and importantly, how your past experiences that may not have seemed um, intuitively influencing your, who you are and your core values, take time to really own how those past experiences have influenced your leadership style. Embrace the values and the experiences and the vulnerabilities that have guided and shaped who you are, and be confident knowing that the value of your perspectives and judgments and the impact of the effectiveness of your leadership are grounded in who you are holistically as a person, and this really truly is um, you know, being your authentic self. So I want to thank
time for you. I want to thank you for the opportunity to, to come and speak with you and I'm happy to um, take any questions or comments. Like I said, this has really been a dialogue throughout the day. Um, so I, I very much appreciate your attention.